Tulpa. Original author? Unknown. Last year, I spent six months participating in what I was told was a psychological experiment. I found an ad in my local newspaper looking for imaginative people looking to make good money. Since it was the only ad that week that I knew I was remotely qualified for, I gave them a call and we arranged an interview. They told me all I had to do was stay in a room, alone, with sensors attached to my head to read my brain activity. While I was there, I would visualize a double for myself. They called it my tulpa. It seemed easy enough, and I agreed to do it as soon as they told me how much I would get paid. And the next day, I began. They brought me into a simple room and gave me a bed, then attached sensors to my heads and hooked them up to a little black box on the table beside me. They talked me through the process of visualizing my double again, and explained that if I got bored or restless, instead of moving around, I should visualize my double moving around, or try to interact with him, and so on. The idea was to keep him with me the entire time I was in the room. I had some trouble with it the first few days. It was more controlled than sort of daydreaming I'd done before. I'd imagine my double for a few minutes, then grow distracted. But by the fourth day, I could manage to keep him present for the entire six hours. They told me I was doing very well. The second week, they gave me a different room with wall-mounted speakers. They told me they wanted to see if I could still keep the Talpa with me, even with distracting stimuli. The music was discordant, ugly, and unsettling and it made the process a bit more difficult, but I managed nonetheless. The next week, they played even more unsettling music, only this time it was punctuated with shrieks and feedback loops, and what sounded like an old-school modem dialing up, not to mention guttural speaking voices some foreign language. I just laughed it off. I was a pro by then. After about a month, I started to get bored. To liven things up, I would start interacting with my doppelganger. We'd have conversations, play rock, paper, scissors, or I'd imagine him juggling or breakdancing or whatever caught my fancy. I asked the researchers if my foolishness would adversely affect their study, but they encouraged it. So we played and communicated, and that was fun for a while, and then it just started getting strange. I was telling him about my first date one day, and he corrected me. I said my date was wearing a yellow top, and he told me it was the green one. I thought about it for a second, and then I realized he was right. It creeped me out. After my shift that day, I talked to one of the researchers about it. You're using a thought form to access your subconscious, they explained. You knew on some level that you were wrong, and you subconsciously corrected yourself. What had been creepy was suddenly really cool. I was talking to my subconscious. It took some practice, but I found out that I could question my tulpa and access all different kinds of memories. I could make it quote whole pages of books that I read once, years before. Or things that I was taught and then immediately forgot when I was in high school. It was awesome. That was around the time I started calling up my double outside of the research center. Not at first, but I was so used to imagining him by now that it seemed almost odd to not have him around. So whenever I was bored, I'd visualize my double. Eventually... I just started doing it all the time. It was amusing to take him along, like an invisible friend almost. I imagined him when I was hanging out with friends, visiting my mom. I even brought him along on a date once. I didn't need to speak out loud to him, so I was able to carry on a conversation with him and nobody would have ever known. I know it sounds strange, but it was fun. Not only was he a walking repository of everything I knew and everything I'd forgotten, 
He also seemed to be more in touch with me than I did sometimes. He had an uncanny grasp of the minute body language that even I didn't realize I was picking up on. For example, I thought the date I brought him on was going not so well, but he pointed out that she was laughing a little too hard at my jokes, leaning in as she spoke to me, and a bunch of other subtle clues that I wasn't consciously picking up on. I listened, and, well, let's just say the date went very, very well. By this time, I've been with the research center for about four months. He was with me constantly. The researchers approached me one day after my shift and asked me if I'd stopped visualizing him. I denied it, and they seemed pleased. I silently asked my double if he knew what prompted that. He just shrugged it off. So did I. I withdrew a little from the world at that point. I was having trouble relating to people. It seemed to me that they were so confused and unsure of themselves. While I had a manifestation of myself to confer with, it made socializing awkward. Nobody else seemed aware of the reasons behind their actions. Why some things made them mad and other things made them laugh. They didn't know what moved them, but I did. Or at least, I could ask myself and get an answer. A friend of mine confronted me one evening. He pounded at the door until I answered, and came in fuming, swearing up a storm. You haven't answered when I called you in weeks, you fucking dick, he yelled. What's your fucking problem? I was about to apologize to him, and probably would have offered to hit the bars with him that night, but my tulpa suddenly grew furious. Hit him, it said, and before I knew what I was doing... I had. I heard his nose break. He fell to the floor and then came up swinging. We beat each other up and down my apartment. I was more furious than I have ever been, and I was not merciful. I knocked him to the ground and gave him two savage kick to the ribs, and then he fled, hunched over and crying. The police were at my apartment a few minutes later. I told them that he had been the instigator. And since he wasn't around to refute me, they just let me off with a warning. My tulpa was gritting the entire time. I spent the night crowing about my victory and sneering over how badly I had beaten a friend. It wasn't until the next morning, when I was checking out my black eye and cut lip in the mirror, that I remembered what had set me off. My double was the one who'd grown furious, not me. I've been feeling guilty and a little ashamed, but he goaded me into a vicious fight with a concerned friend. He was present, of course. He knew my thoughts. You don't need him anymore. You don't need anyone else, he told me. I felt my skin crawl. I explained all of this to the researchers who employed me, but they just laughed it off. You can't be scared of something that you're imagining, one told me. My double stood behind him, nodding his head, then smirked at me. I tried to take their words to heart, but over and over for the next few days, I found myself growing more and more anxious around my tulpa. And it looked like he was changing. He looked taller, more menacing. His eyes twinkled with mischief, and I saw malice in his constant smile. I finally decided that no job was worth losing my mind over. If he was out of control, I'd have to put him down. I was so used to visualizing him at this point that it was basically an automatic process. So I would try my damnedest not to visualize him. It took a few days, but it started to somewhat work. I could get rid of him for hours at a time. but. Every time, he would come back, and he seemed even worse. His skin seemed ashen. His teeth were more pointed than before. He would hiss and sneer. He would threaten and swear. The discordant music I'd been listening to for months also seemed to accompany him everywhere. Even when I was at home, 
I would relax and slip up, no longer concentrating on not seeing him. And there he would be, and that fucking howling music with him. I was still visiting the research center and spending my six hours there. I needed the money, and I thought they weren't aware that I was actively not visualizing my tulpa. I was wrong. After my shift one day, about five and a half months in, two impressive men grabbed me and restrained me. Someone in a lab coat stabbed a hypodermic needle into my body. I woke up from my stupor back in the room, this time strapped to my bed, music blaring, my doppelganger standing over me, cackling. He didn't even look human anymore. His features were twisted. His eyes were sunken into the sockets and filmed over like a corpse's. He was much, much taller than me, but hunched over. His hands were twisted and the fingernails looked like talons. He was, in short, fucking terrifying. I tried to will him away, but I just couldn't. I couldn't seem to concentrate. He giggled and tapped the IV on my arm. I thrashed at my restraints the best I could, but I couldn't move at all. They're pumping you full of the good shit, I think. How's the mind? All fuzzy? He leaned closer and closer as he spoke. I gagged. His breath smelled like rotten meat. I tried to focus, but I just couldn't banish him. The next two weeks were just terrible. Every so often, someone in a doctor's coat would come inject me with something or force feed me a pill. They kept me dizzy and unfocused, and sometimes just left me hallucinating or straight up delusional. My thought form was still present, constantly mocking me. He either interacted with or caused my delusions. I even hallucinated that my mother was there, scolding me. And then he cut her throat and showered me in her blood. It was so real, I could almost taste it. The doctors never spoke to me. I begged at time, screamed, even hurled invectives, demanded answers. They never spoke to me. They may have talked to my tulpa, my personal monster. I'm not sure. I was so doped up and confused. It may have been more than a delusion, but I remember them talking to him. I grew convinced he was the real one, and I was the thought form. He encouraged that line of thought sometimes, and mocked me at others. Another thing that I would just pray was a delusion was, he could touch me. More than that, he could hurt me. He would poke and prod at me if he felt that I wasn't giving him enough attention. One day, he grabbed my testicles and squeezed until I told him I loved him. Another time, he slashed my forearms with one of his talons. I still have the scar. Most days, I can convince myself that I just injured myself and just hallucinated that he was responsible. Most days. Then, one day, while he was telling me a story about how he was going to gut everyone I ever loved, starting with my sister, he paused. A pouty look crossed his face, and then he reached out and touched my head, like my mother used to when I was feverish. He stayed still for a long moment, and then smiled. All of the thoughts are creative, he told me. Then... He just walked out the door. Three hours later, I was given an injection and then passed out. I woke up unrestrained, shaking. I made my way to the door and found it unlocked. I walked out into an empty hallway, and then I just ran. I stumbled more than once, but I made it down the stairs and out to the lot behind the building. There, I collapsed, weeping like a child. I knew that I had to keep moving, but I just couldn't manage it. I did get home eventually. I don't remember how. I locked the door and shoved the dresser in front of it. Took a long shower, 
and I slept for about a day and a half. Nobody came for me that night. Nobody came the next day, or the one after that. It was finally over. I spent a week locked in that room, but it felt like a century. I had withdrawn so much from my life before that no one even knew that I was missing. The police didn't find anything. The research center was empty when they searched it. The paper trail fell apart, and the names that I'd been given were aliases. Even the money I received was apparently untraceable. I recovered as much as anyone can. I don't leave the house much, and I have panic attacks when I do. I cry. A lot. I don't sleep much, and my nightmares are terrible. It's over, I tell myself. I survived. I used the concentration that those fucking bastards taught me to convince myself. It works. Sometimes. Not today, though. Three days ago, I got a phone call from my mother. There's been a tragedy. My sister is the latest victim in this spree of killings. The police say the perpetrator mugs his victim and then guts him. The funeral was this afternoon. It was as lovely a service as a funeral can be, I suppose. I was a little distracted, though. All I could hear was music coming from somewhere distant. Discordant, unsettling stuff. It sounded like feedback and shrieking. Maybe a modem dialing up. I still hear it. Only a little bit louder now. Guys, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my $10 and above patrons, Paul Z, Mr. Swiston, Official Jerboa, Chaos X, JY, Pyromancer, and Hayden MH. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy the Patreon-exclusive content that went up a couple days ago, and I will get more up soonish. I'm going to try to do about two Patreon-exclusive things a month that you will have access to at any time. So if that sounds good to you, please reach out and let me know. $5 patrons, of course, get this too, but to get mentioned at the end of the video, you need to become a $10 one. It's your generosity that makes this channel possible. Thank you guys.